Hey, everybody, and welcome to Collider's 10 Actors Who Were Almost Superheroes. I'm Ashley Mova, and joining me are Mark Ellis and John Campia. You know, casting is both an imperfect and an inexact science and art. It's not always about getting the most talented actor or actress. It's about finding the right actor who's the right fit for the right role. Who could imagine anyone other than Robert Downey Jr. playing Iron Man at this point? But for as many stars that we love as heroes, there's tons more who we almost love. And here are some of the best near misses. At number 10, starting off the list is Army Hammer as Batman. Army Hammer was looked at to don the cape and cowl for a 2008 movie version of the Justice League. It was also to be directed by Mad Max director George Miller. However, plans were scrapped and fans would have to wait another decade before seeing the DC heroes all on the big screen together. And John, I don't know about you, but my litmus test is if I don't want to see you as the Lone Ranger, I definitely don't <laughs> want to see you as Batman. But having said all of that, the rest of this sounds so intriguing that we could have gotten a Justice League movie before the heyday of the Avengers way back in 2008. Army Hammer, I don't think, would have made a great Batman, but man, they could have gotten a step up on Marvel. I remember there was some tension going on because this was going to be another Batman going on at the same time that Christopher Nolan had his Batman franchise going on. And it had a lot of people up in arms about that, even though we wanted a Justice League movie. And really, who among us had ever even heard of Army Hammer at the time? I still remember it was a running joke amongst the film commentary crowds who would say, you know who's going to play Batman? Some guy named Army Hammer. Now, we've seen the social network and how talented this guy could be. And I'm going to go against the grain a little bit. I think Army Hammer could actually be a pretty decent Batman in the right film at the right time, and this Justice League property was neither of those. But you know who disagrees with you? Army Hammer. He said recently <laughs> yes, he that he does not think he would have been right for Batman anyway, so I guess we're glad Ben Affleck's got it now. At number nine, Leonardo DiCaprio as Spider-Man. This could have happened twice. James Cameron wanted to do a Spider-Man movie before Marvel was the Marvel we know today, and the rights for the web crawler were all tied up. He has Leo in mind to play Parker and spoke to him about it. Then in the early 2000s, when Sony was ready to make their Sam Raimi version, they offered the role to Leo. He passed on the project, saying now he just wasn't ready to play the role. When you look at those issues of talent and fit, Leonardo DiCaprio would have been both. Now, it's difficult for us now in hindsight to look back at that because we all love the first Sam Raimi Spider-Man. We all love the first two Sam Raimi Spider-Mans. Let's not go into the third one. <laughs> but if we try to take that out of it for a second, think about it. A James Cameron-directed Spider-Man starring Leonardo DiCaprio, one of the best actors on the planet today, this is something that might have had a legacy of its own. The James Cameron project is the most interesting one to me because who knows what that would have looked like with a director like James Cameron. I don't think Leo as Peter Parker and Sam Raimi's version changes anything all that much because Sam Raimi had such control over that franchise. Yeah, yeah, so we would have had a great first one, a great second one, and the third one still would have fallen apart when he decided to be a gothic sing and dance kid instead of a superhero. I don't think this would have changed a lot of things. Leo's career, on the other hand, maybe that would have done some different things, but I think we still would see an A-list star in DiCaprio. Had he done it, I don't know that he ever would have sank in that damn boat. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Number eight, Nicolas Cage as Superman. See John Schnepp's Death of Superman Lives, what happened? But yep, this is real. In the late 90s, Tim Burton was set to direct Cage in Superman Lives. Cage is known as a huge fan of the comic, and Burton had previously directed Batman and Batman Returns. John Schnepp's film about this whole thing going down is so engaging to watch, and it makes me say, I need to see this movie, though I don't know if we should have ever seen this movie. Nicolas Cage wasn't always the crazy direct-to-video guy he is now. <laughs> he was an Academy Award-winning star not that long ago, leaving Las Vegas and then going into this. Tim Burton, I think, had the right guy to play Superman. Let's not forget what a huge fan of the comic books. I think Nicolas Cage owns the number one issue of Superman, if I'm not mistaken. So he might have been the right guy to do this at the time. Nicolas Cage as Superman is kind of like a butt end of a joke today. You, when you tell a lot of people, do you know Nick Cage is going to play Superman? A lot of people, ah, but you're right. A lot of people forget that there was an era there and not a tiny window. It's not like he fluked into it where Nicolas Cage was considered one of the hottest actors in Hollywood. This guy is uber talented to the teeth. That being said... Like I said at the beginning, sometimes it's not a matter of just of talent, it's a matter of fit. There is no world, there is no universe that exists in this one or the next where Nicolas Cage is a good fit for Clark Kent slash kal -El. I just, even after watching Schnepp's brilliant documentary on it, there's no way 
that Nicolas Cage was ever the right fit for Superman. But you know, Schnepp picked the right subject to do his documentary on because of how far this project got when he was in the costume. Nicolas Cage yeah. was in the costume. They were taking pictures. They were doing screenshots. This thing was moving forward before the plug got pulled. Number seven, Bill Murray as Batman. Exactly, Bill F. And Murray was looked at to play the Cape Crusader. In the early 80s, the same guy who wrote Superman, Tom Mankiewicz, wrote an origin story for Bats. Ghostbusters director Ivan Reitman was supposed to direct. Sounds like a comedy in the making, right? Eh, it wasn't. It was supposed to be a serious story and do for Batman what Donner did for Superman. Murray would have played the damaged billionaire Cape Crusader. Cats and dogs living together, Joker and Batman. <laughs> Look, Bill Murray is an icon in this business. He has proven he can be one of the greatest comedy minds. He has proven he can do drama. He's proven he can do it all. But I'm going to go back myself personally and fall back on that whole thing we talked about, Nicolas Cage as Superman. This isn't a fit. Now, some of you might be saying, and rightfully so, who would have thought Mr. Mom would have been a good Batman too? And I totally understand <laughs> that. But I just cannot envision Bill Murray as Batman. I don't think it would have been good for him. I don't think it would have been good for the character. I think this is one we dodged a bullet. See, I really want to see what Murray's take on Bruce Wayne would have been. You would imagine it would be something campier like the Adam West version, but that's not what Ivan Reitman had in mind at all. He wanted it to be serious and brooding. And get this, as the villain in their Batman movie, they wanted, you got it, David Bowie as the Joker. <laughs> That's a movie I want to see. Let's dance. <laughs> Number six, Tom Cruise as Iron Man. Yep, Tom Cruise was almost Tony Stark. It is hard to think of it without getting nauseous or to imagine anyone but Robert Downey Jr. playing Tony Stark, but he definitely wasn't the studio's first choice. Cruise had wanted to do Iron Man as early as the 1990s, and at one point, Quentin Tarantino was interested in directing. And there's two issues I would have with this casting. One is, could we separate Tom Cruise, the movie star, from who Iron Man is? Robert Downey Jr. was so perfect because we didn't have to separate those characters' history. They mirrored one another. The other issue would be, could you get Tom Cruise to sign that huge multi-picture deal that Robert Downey Jr. had to? Iron Man is in pretty much every Marvel movie, so would Tom Cruise be available to pop into all these things? Would he have to take a break from hanging on the side of airplanes and standing on the tallest building in the world. Now, this isn't one of those situations where one conversation happened over drinks in a Hollywood bar, a pitch was made, an offer was made, and then the act rejected it. Tom Cruise was actually attached to be in this and was working with Kevin Feige for years and was probably going to be in this role. I'm going to tell you this right now. While I'm totally glad that we ended up with Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, I think this is a match that could have worked. This crazy little elf could have been <laughs> a great Tony Stark, I think. I think he could have given all the bravado auto stuff that we got in Robert Downey Jr. Maybe Robert Downey Jr. ended up being a better one, yes, but I think a Tony Stark played by Tom Cruise, I think it could have worked. If you go to an alternate universe and all these movies that we're talking about are playing on the big screen at the same time, I think the one I'd go see is Tom Cruise's Iron Man. Number five, Bridget Nielsen as She-Hulk. Sounds ridiculous, good because it is. In the early 90s, after starring in 80s gems such as Cobra, Red Sonja, and Rocky IV, the blonde bombshell Bridget Nielsen was cast as She-Hulk with writer Larry Cohen attached to the project. Luckily enough, whichever studio executive who smashed his head when he greenlit the film came to his senses and this shit piece was canceled. You know, the most entertaining thing I think Bridget Nielsen has ever given us is when she was a puppet in the British TV series Spitting Image, in a sketch where her and Sylvester Stallone were in divorce court, and since Sylvester Stallone paid for her breast augmentation, he was wanting visitation rights on her breasts, and that was pretty much the only entertaining thing she has ever given us. She was dead weight in Red Sun. As much as I love that movie, she was dead weight in that movie. She was dead right weight in the Rocky film. There is no incarnation of any comic book hero that I wanted to see her play. You clearly have never seen Flavor of Love, because her and Flavor <laughs> <laughs> a play of going back and forth it was one of the best times of those two years I had. Uh, I want to see this movie for no other reason because of its time in the early 90s. So people were starting to tinker around with computer effects. I just want to see what She-Hulk would have looked like when she ultimately hulked out. Would they just get a huge latex suit to play the character? Would they do it all practical effects? Or would you try some of that pre-Jurassic Park CGI? That might have been even more funnier than just watching Bridget Nielsen still be in that movie. All right, you've got me coming this far. <laughs> I'll say... If I could have had a She-Hulk movie back then, but the only way to get it was with Bridget Nielsen in it, okay, fine. I'll take it. We could have had like a screening of that and Roger Corman's Fantastic <laughs> Four back-to-back. -back. Number four, Emily Blunt as Black Widow or Peggy Carter. 
Marvel has gone after top-tier talent from the start, from Jeff Bridges to Sam Rockwell, and they made a strong push for Emily Blunt twice. The Sicario star was looked at to team up with the Avengers on the big screen, but the studio ultimately went with Scarlett Johansson. And if you've seen films like Edge of Tomorrow or Whooper, you know Emily Blunt can kick ass. She's a modern-day Brigitte Nielsen. I mean, she <laughs> she not only brings an ass-kicking quality to her movies, she also brings acting chops, so her as Black Widow or Peggy Carter makes sense. I'm glad she wasn't locked down to Agent Carter. Her as Black Widow, I mean, look, Scarlett Johansson's great, but Emily Blunt, that's an intriguing move for me. Yeah, this is kind of in the same camp for me as the whole Tom Cruise's Iron Man thing. This is a movie... I would have wanted to see Emily Blunt as Black Widow. I think she would have killed it. I think she would have crushed it. I think she would have been great in the role. If tomorrow Scarlett Johansson decides she wants to retire from acting and they went and got Emily Blunt to replace her, I'd be thrilled. That being said, having seen Scarlett Johansson mm -hmm. as Black Widow, it is really difficult at this point to imagine anybody else. She has kind of embodied the role of Black Widow at this point. So while I would have loved it, I'm kind of happy we've got Scarlett Johansson. And with all the projects that Marvel has in the oven right now, you got to think that Emily Blunt is going to have her phone ringing soon. Yeah. Number three, Jeff Goldblum as the Hulk. Eric Bana played the Hulk in Ang Lee's Less Than Love 2003 version, but the fly and Jurassic Park tall guy Jeff Goldblum had a crack at it too. He tested, but ultimately wasn't right for the role. You uh, don't want to see me uh, angry. That was a terrible Jeff Goldblum. That was awful. Uh, this is one of those ones. I love Jeff Goldblum. I eat this guy up in Independence Day and everything appears that he's got a persona personality. You ever watch him in the league where he plays one of the guy's oh, he's dads? Phenomenal. He's fantastic in the league. I love this guy. No way is he Dr. Banner. No way is he Dr. Banner in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah, I'm really glad. Look, a lot of things could have helped that 2003 Ang Lee Hulk. A lot of things could help, but I don't think Jeff Goldblum as Banner. Again, it's not a matter of talent. It's a matter of fit, and I don't think this was it. But he's so good as a scientist. Like, the fly yeah. or Independence Day, he was a tech kind of guy. He was a mathematician in Jurassic Park. On the spot, he created a computer virus for a totally alien spaceship he had never worked with before. He's That's a great scientist. Right. He, he invented the word triangulate. The guy knows his <laughs> stuff. I think I would have liked to have seen this version because Eric Bann, I thought, didn't bring that much to the role at all. So this is pre-Ed Norton. This is pre-Mark Ruffalo. Let's get somebody with some personality, some eccentric genius in there. Jeff Goldblum would have been the right guy for me. Number two, Jack Black as Green Lantern. The actor was close to landing the part in a more comedic take on the hero before Ryan Reynolds and his sizzling abs showed up. Robert Smigel penned a script that the studio considered before moving in a slightly different direction. And let's be honest, you could have given any one of those school rock kids a camera and asked them to make a Green Lantern movie. It might have been better than the one we ended up getting. Jack Black in this role doesn't make a lot of sense to me, even though... It, we, we've seen a comedy uh, star go from comedies into being a green superhero, Seth Rogen, as the Green Hornet. I just don't know that Jack Black could have brought. He just doesn't look enough like a superhero. I think the performance would have been fine. His physique just doesn't scream Green Lantern to me. There were several, well, maybe dozens of things wrong with that Green Lantern film. Got. I never thought that Ryan Reynolds was the problem with the movie. But here's the thing. Replacing Ryan Reynolds with Jack Black? No. But I'm going to go a little bit off the beaten path here. I would have wanted to see a Green Lantern movie starring Jack Black. I, now, granted, I would want to see it outside of a DC cinematic universe. It would have to be its own standalone thing, almost like an Elsewhere kind of thing. But I think there is comedic potential here to take it not so seriously, have some fun with it, make it a one-off, don't tie in Superman to it, or don't bring in <laughs> Batman, just make it its own standalone thing. And I think a Jack Black Green Lantern could have been kind of fun. And that's one of the things that we're realizing if we go down this list, is that it's so important when you're casting a superhero movie not just to make that a great film to, to make sure it can fit into a bigger yes. franchise. You're right, something as standalone like a Hancock where he yeah. has these problems, yeah, 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 a reluctant yeah. superhero. It would have been intriguing, I guess. And number one, Christopher Walken as Superman. Before the studios went with the relatively unknown Christopher Reeve, they wanted a more experienced actor to rub shoulders with Marlon Brando. Walken was one of many actors who screen tested, along with Paul Newman, Dustin Hoffman, and Clint Eastwood. When you're talking about people who are cast in certain movies, you're talking about really the whole impression, image, and flavor and tone that a movie will have because of who's playing that role. Christopher Walken playing that Superman I think forever would have changed our perception of Superman. Now, whether that's for good or for bad, that's up for everybody else to decide. But we would not look at Superman the same way. The gosh golly, I'll get your cat out of a tree Superman <laughs> that Christopher Reeve gave us that was beloved by millions. 
just by changing actors, and this is a great example of how casting is so key, I think would have fundamentally changed our understanding of the character and the character he would have been and the character he would have played, and we would have just had a different Superman. Christopher Walken as Han Solo is one thing. Him as <laughs> Superman is a totally different beast. And remember when I said that I want to see Tom Cruise as Iron Man, if we could see any one of these movies, I take that all back. Because seeing Walken as Superman is something that I darkly desire to check out. I do not think this should have been made. Christopher Reeve was totally the right call. That's a situation where you see a bunch of actors for a role. You're considering even guys like Paul Newman, Burt Reynolds, Clint Eastwood was looked at, and when Christopher Reeve walks into the room, it's like, everybody, thanks, you guys can go home. Yeah, this We're is our guy. Here. This is the fit. This mm -hmm. is, And that really goes back to what we started this whole video on, and the premise is that a lot of these roles, and a lot of times, it's not always just about who's the best actor in the room. Because Christopher Walken, I mean, what don't you give him, right? But it's about fit, and in this case, it was clearly Christopher Reeve was a better fit. I'm here to save you. <laughs> it wasn't horrible. It wasn't horrible. All right, well, there you have it. <laughs> Ten actors who were almost superheroes. The universe could have been completely altered. Head to the comment section of this vid right now and let us know which of these movies do you want to see. And while you're here, why don't you just take a second and click the subscribe button. Become a subscriber to our Collider Videos YouTube channel, keeping you up to date on all the daily movie news and special editorials we got going on around here all the time. That'll do it for us here at this table. Thanks so much for joining us. And until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>